Howdy folks, this is Jeremy, KF7IJZ, co-host of the Ham Radio Workbench Podcast, your bi-weekly deep dive into making and technical topics of interest to the radio amateur. Today I wanted to bring to you guys a very short video demonstrating the application of Kirchhoff's current law that we discussed at the beginning of our last episode when uh, Smitty was guest hosting. So the question a ham would have is if I build a portable power module uh, consisting of, say, lithium iron phosphate batteries, Am I able to both simultaneously charge it by way of, say, solar panels through a charge controller while I am simultaneously running my radios or my laptops or lights or whatever other equipment I might need in the field? And the answer is going to be yes. And we'll demonstrate that on my bench now. So we're going to start off with a little tour of what I have set up on the bench today. Starting off with a BioNO Power 8 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Now this battery was fully charged prior to the demonstration and I used my DC load to pull approximately an one and a half amp hours out of it uh, just for the purpose of demonstration so we could be pulling current uh, while we charge. To simulate our radio, computers, or other equipment that we would be using in the field, today we'll be using my Mainuo DC programmable load. And to simulate a charge controller for a lithium iron phosphate battery, we'll be using my Regal DP711 power supply. Finally, to monitor what's going on with the battery, we're going to be using a West Mountain Radio power check. Uh, this is going to be connected, if you can see, directly to the battery. So it will be the source of truth as far as everything going into or coming out of the battery. On the right hand side, I have a little power pole distribution block that puts all of these uh, things in parallel. So effectively, that distribution block would be a node. Then we have that connected to the output of the power supply and the input of the DC load. When talking about Kirchhoff's current law, which says that in a circuit, no more current will be used than is supplied or no more current will be supplied than is used. So basically current used in the circuit is equal to current supply. This is an important fact because some people, especially those who, a lot of folks who are not hands maybe who worry about electronics, may see a power supply is rated for five amps and uh, the device they're plugging in only needs a quarter amp and they have this fear that somehow the power supply will damage the device, but that's not the case. The power supply won't just start pumping current through, it can only provide as much as the rest of the circuit is using. One of the reasons that we are focusing just on lithium iron phosphate for this video is that charging of lithium iron phosphate batteries is really not that complicated. Uh, pretty much a charge controller or battery charger in this case is simply acting as a constant current source and as the, the voltage of the battery rises, there is a, a cutoff point that you set and once that voltage is hit, uh, the, the power supply basically acts as a constant voltage source. Well, as it turns out, a good benchtop supply like this Regal or any other constant voltage, constant current supply can model this perfectly. So we're gonna start out by setting the voltage, which in this case, bioeno batteries are rated for 14.6 volts. And the battery charger that would actually come with this particular bioeno battery is current limited to two amps. So if we take a moment and think about the circuit that we have here, we effectively have two current sources, one being the battery, the other being the power supply, in parallel with one another. And then in parallel with that, we have our load, which this again would simulate any radios, computers, lighting, any other equipment that you would be running from your power module. So let's start the demonstration off in the situation of I have my battery, it's already charged, and I want to run a radio. I have this still set at one amp, and if I turn it on, if we come in here to the power check, you can see that in fact one amp is being drawn from the battery and with the arrow pointing to the right that tells us it's going out towards the load. So far that's not unexpected at all. But what happens if let's say that this is our power module and we're running our radios while somebody else is still setting up the solar panels and the charge controller and all of a sudden we introduce a small charge controller and something like a power film solar panel into the equation, all of a sudden we have a second current source. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm gonna set the current to one amp. 
maybe in this case the panels aren't getting um, maybe uh, panels aren't getting maximum sunlight uh, you know whatever but the point is is I'm about to put another amp source into the system and when I turn the power supply on we start off by seeing that we're drawing one amp at 13.31 volts our load is drawing one amp and if I come down here and look at the battery I see that I'm actually not drawing out of the battery at all I am actually pulling ever so slightly or putting ever so slightly some power back into the battery so one thing also I'll point out is you're gonna notice this is saying 13.32 volts this is saying 13.245 volts and down here we have 13.28 so why are all the voltages different this is largely going to be related to the fact that technically connecting all these devices are a series of resistors. We just call them wires. Uh, in an ideal situation, I would have used incredibly heavy gauge and incredibly short pieces of cabling for the demo, uh, but there is some negligible, invisible loss, if you will, from the internal resistance of each of the cables. So now we've set up, I have a radio sitting on receive, and let's say the sun comes out and all of a sudden I'm able to get a full two amps charge current. Well, I'm still drawing my one amp on the load. I now have two amps available. So with the excess, we can now actually see there's one amp going into the battery. So at this point, I have a two amp current source and I have two one amp loads. I have, in this case, the DC load and the battery. What happens now when I need more power? We'll set it on three amps. So the load now requires three amps. The supply, which again is simulating the solar charge controller, is still only capable of providing two amps. So this hasn't shut off, meaning it's getting the current from somewhere. And in our circuit, we have a battery. So at this point, we're getting two amps from the power supply and we're drawing one amp from the battery. And you can see that power is going out to the right. Obviously, if I continue this, crank it up to five amps, again, I've only got two amps coming out of the Regal, so the battery has to provide the other three in order to provide for the need of that five amps. Finally, if I decide to unplug my load altogether and I turn off, the one amp draw, we can still clearly see the power supply is still giving us two amps of current, but at this point, the battery is able to make use of all that current in the process of charging. So as you can see, you are able to put a battery in a box, connect it to a charge controller directly to the terminals of the battery, and also connect a load at the same time. As you are drawing energy from the system, some of that energy will be coming straight out of your charging device, and into your radio or whatever other equipment that you're running. In the instances where, uh, you know I'm a big fan of the Genesun uh, charge controllers, that uh, I have two versions, one that will provide up to five amps and one that will provide up to 10 amps. So as soon as my load actually exceeds what it's able to provide, that's when current will start coming out of the battery to help make up the difference. And in the instances where there, that five amp, say, charge controller, is able to provide the full five amps to the circuit, but if I'm just sitting there and my radio is on receive, uh, and of course on average about 0.9 to one amps is a pretty common industry figure for an HF radio on receive, then you can see that the excess current is then able to flow into the battery. So hopefully this demonstration was very clear and made things easy to understand that when you're building a power box, what happens when you try to both simultaneously charge and discharge it. Thank you again for watching. Uh, we're gonna be trying to do more short videos like this throughout the year for the Ham Radio Workbench. And if you are not currently a Ham Radio Workbench listener, please take a moment and search for Ham Radio Workbench in your podcast app of choice, or you can learn more information at www.hamradioworkbench.com. You can find me on Twitter at KF7IJZ, or you could follow the show at Ham Workbench as well. If you have any feedback for us, please feel free 
to use the contact form on the website, we're always looking for feedback and want to make sure that we are providing our listeners with the things that they are interested in. Thank you so much for watching. 73.